Hello today, welcome to Brisbane Road for episode 2 of my squeaky clean FM18 game save Rise of the Orient. In this episode we're going to summarise my first week live on Twitch, bring you bang up to date with what's been happening at Brisbane Road as we try and get the Orient back into the Football League at the first attempt. That's right, folks, back once again with another update of my FM18 game save with Leighton Orient. So far, so good. We are deep into the month of October as we edge towards the month of November, and we are sitting pretty at the top of the Banana Armor League, as I call it. Uh, two points adrift of second place Maidstone, and most importantly, seven points clear of Dagenham and Redbridge, if my maths is correct, which, we are, which, we are, which it is. For the past week, I've been live on Twitch doing the uh, actual game save, so that content is still up there if you want to check it back in all its glory, in all of its six-hour glory. Um, but right here, right now, we're going to do a condensed version of the highlights, bring you back up to speed, and we'll also check in a game at the end of the video just to give you just a little bit of a taster of what the Mighty Orient are up to today. So this is my current Leighton Orient squad I've been working with for the past week. Been doing pretty good. Like I said, we are top of the pops in the National League as it stands. So a lot of credit for our current position in the league. Goes down to my midfield three, which is uh, Gorman, Clay and Lawless in this 4-1-2-3 um, uh, defensive midfield wide formation. It's been pretty effective for us. It's not been it's not been mind boggling. We haven't we haven't really turned over teams, but we've we've managed to get the results. And also the the goal scoring prowess of Macaulay Bone, and I, hopefully I'm saying that right. He's been my main man scoring the majority of goals for the Orient. So let's take a look at the transfers that I did bring in over the over, over my short stint so far as manager. Josh Coulson was already here. I brought in Jack Doyle on loan from Blackburn Rovers. Uh, I also brought in Will Wood on loan from Southampton Defender. Also two defenders because, you know, defence is key in my eyes. I, I'm a Blackburn Rovers fan at heart and I know just so how frustrating it is if we don't have any uh, defenders. So I made sure that we stocked up pretty well on defenders. Nico Hammerlinen's come in from QPR. Uh, he's been in and out of the first team. Dale Gorman, like I said, has been critical. It's been actually a blinding signing for me. Uh, no wages. And uh, he's been ever present or pretty much ever present in the side. And also Donovan Wilson's chipped in with a couple of goals up front. He's on loan from Wolves. Let's take a look back at the fixtures. It's been uh, a pretty positive start to the season. If we turn the clock back to preseason, we had, a, again, a pretty strong preseason, only losing to Stevenage. But let's just take a look back at the actual league fixtures. We opened up the first game of the season away to Sutton, picking up 2-1 win. Goals from this fella, George Elakobi, followed by Macaulay Bone, also getting his first goal of the season. Next up, it was a home make fixture against Solihull Moors. Again, Macaulay Bone gets his second of the season. Then it was a home fixture against Maidstone. Macaulay Bone bagging a brace there on the 39th minute. And right here on the 69th minute. Then it was back in the away days again for Leighton Orient when we took on Bromley in a bit of a... It was a tough match, uh, finishing 2-1 winners. Donovan Wilson getting his first goal and then also Bone getting another, which continued our positive start to the season. Four wins out of four, I think it was at that point. Um, moving forward, we then took on Woking away and our first drop points of the season. But we did open up scoring pretty early on Jamie Sendell's white with the goal. Then we took on Eastley at our gaff. 3 0 winners. James Dayton with his first two goals of the season. Macaulay Bone is sandwiched in between that. Um, Dayton adding his second right in the injury time. And then we took on Maidenhead. Battle of the top, I guess, as we look back on that now. Dale Gorman, uh, the lone E, opened up the scores. Well, scored for us. Then our first slip up of the season. But that slip up didn't stop us. We picked up another three points as we picked, beat Boreham Wood 1 0 at their gaff. McCauley Bone once again on the score sheet. But our form was still inconsistent. Picked up another, we dropped another two points, another banana skin against FC Halifax at home before a five goal thriller against Hartlepool, where we had goals from Dale Gorman, McCauley Boone, and Craig Clay's first of the season. We'll talk about more about Craig Clay in just a second. Uh, our inconsistent form. Did see us drop down the table a little bit to third. I think our lowest point was third. We had a nightmare against Aldershot at their gaff before. For a Craig Clay hat-trick, uh, 
gave us all three points in a 3-1 home victory against AFC Flyde. Then, a monster clash out of my eyes. Uh, two fallen giants in Leighton Orient and Tranmere. Uh, we took on uh, the Tranmere Rovers at their gaff. 2-1 winners. Courtesy of a Jack Lee own goal. And then also Macaulay Bone with another goal for his tally. The wins kept on coming. Uh, as we picked up a monstrous 1-0 win at uh, mid-table Barrow. Macaulay Bone once again in injury time. Uh, before our disappointing exit in the FA Cup. Fourth round qualifying round against promotion chasing Dagenham Rome <coughs> Redbridge. Um, I did field a weakened side in this one. Henry Ochang was the only goal scorer for us. I did, I did mix it up a bit because I did have a lot of players on my case trying to get themselves in the first team. I thought this was going to be a good opportunity, but uh, my gamble backfired. They called me the Tinker Man and it backfired. Crash out of the FA Cup before it really even gets going. Then we were back into the league and another injury time winner for Macaulay Bone against Macclesfield. 1-0 uh, winners. And then I ended it uh, with another monstrous victory. 3-0 win at Gateshead thanks to Donovan Wilson. Uh, a goal and two more for Macaulay Bone. The 32nd minute and also on the 41st minute. I'm thinking you're wondering what the heck is that sparkly thing at the top there? Well that, my friends, is my Manager of the Month award. I picked that up. Uh, in August, uh, and Macaulay Bone also picked up the Young Player of the Month for the same month. Um, but yeah, this is where we are right now as we head into Wrexham away. And Wrexham currently sit 13th. We're top of the pops, 39 points, uh, two defeats, three draws, 12 wins. Um, as for the goal scoring charts, Macaulay Bone is joint top with 33 year old James Constable from Eastleigh. Uh, it's good to see that because, um, to be honest with you, Macaulay Bone is not... I, I'm, I'm on the lookout for a striker, another striker to go with, to complement Bone. Uh, because without him, we're lacking in, in firepower. My other options are David Mooney and Matt Harold. They've not really gelled for me. Uh, I haven't really given that much, much, much chances, to be honest with you, because it's hard to drop Bone. Um, and there's not many... Uh, cup games that I can I can experiment with, so I have to really play my strongest eleven for the league because I don't want to I don't want to you know jinx it or change a winning system because so far we're doing pretty good and and, and for a person who's been out of the game for about ten years, um, yeah I'm 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 pretty happy with how things are going. As I've got you guys here, might as well play the next game, which is Wrexham away from home as we edge towards the end of October. Uh, in, into the month of November. So if you join me next week, you'll be able to catch uh, me live as I battle through this fixture congestion. We've got a massive fixture pileup coming over over the Christmas period when we take on second place Maidstone on the 23rd of December. Then we take on third place Dagenham and Redbridge on, the t on Boxing Day, the 26th of December. Then we have a visit of Bromley before we have the return leg against Dagenham and Redbridge at their gaff on New Year's Day. So this a uh, cluster of four fixtures. If we could take, well, if we could get 12 points from this, I think we will be on our way to um, the Football League. Here we are, was built up to the fixture against Wrexham. Uh, just a quick glance overview of the matchup, see if there's any standouts or any bits of information that I need to take note of. But uh, back into team selection now. So I made a few changes, and this is what I believe is my strongest 11 going into this match against Wrexham. Uh, and then as we edge towards kickoff, so you're going to be here. And watch the uh, hopefully a glorious day. If not, it's going to be a nightmare. Uh, head into the dressing room. I'm going to give these guys a bit of a bit of a positive boost, or, or, or not. Um, so let's get stuck into it. Uh, this is the new game. Um, it's actually changed my. We'll, we'll, let, we'll let it fly for now, and I'll tweak it later. There we go, Judd. Throw into Clay. Back to Judd, Hammerline and Dayton with a shot saved by Dunn in goal for Wrexham. Um, Gorman now, have hovering over a free kick, floats it in there. Again, Gorman, that's a shot. I do not like this angle. I don't know what's going on. It's hard to, hard to, because I'm, I'm used to a more of a, a bird's eye view sort of thing. So I'll have to change that. Get ready back for the, for the stream. Because this is now the actual live game. I did update it last night. Um, so the beta is gone. Here is Wrexham pressing now. Pearson. Hammerlion breaks it. Tries to pump it forward, but 
Unfortunately, it gets nowhere. Wrexham still have it. Right. Pushes it out to Hansen. Wedgeberry. Smith. To other Smith. To Bobden. He's through. Flipping 1 0. Yeah, this, this would be great, wouldn't it? This would be great. Nice summary for you. Here we go. This is what I'm used to. Elakobi. Dayton. Disaster. Uh, what I have been doing. Look at that. Look at their side. Look at their side. They're riddled with injuries. We can't really take advantage of it. But what I have been doing is uh, in scenarios such as this where I'm, I'm trailing. Um, I revert to or towards the end, maybe at the 60 minute mark. I'll revert to a 4-4-2. Hang on a minute. 4-4-2. Uh, um, pretty much gung-ho. Going for it. So we shall see if that's required, which it probably will be. So I decided to give him a bit of a bit of a, a mouthful. I'm going to give him another 15 minutes and then uh, look to make some changes. Mac enough. Floats it. Boom. Gets rid of it. Back down. Mac Mac enough. Gorman. Giving away. Bowden. Got space now for Wrexham. Lawless cleans house. Pay dividends. Judd. Pings it. Long. Karoma with his pace. It's outdone by there. Elakobi at the back. Lawless. Out left to have a line and crosses. Boone keeps it in play. Only for a little bit. Pearson now wrecks him. The second goal will probably end it. McEnough boots it. Wedgebury will get it for Wrexham. Pearson closed down a little bit by one of my boys. Lawless breaks it up. Dayton over the top. Karoma can't shoot for Toffee. Um, basically, this is not what I was, was hoping to showcase today. Hamelainen, Karoma, over the top, McEnough, Boone. Should have done better, should have done better. Granger to Judd now, to Karoma. Pings it, Boone, how many temps do you need? Into the 70th minute now. Into the final 12 minutes we trail. Corner. McEnough. Anyone going to get on this? No. Wrexham will break. To right. Space for Bowden. Hammerlinen's there. Cleans up. Last 10 minutes of the game. Smith for Wrexham. Caddock. Bowden. Shot. Collected by Granger. Dismal, woeful, whatever you want to call it. Hammerlinen, McEnough. Lawless has a shot deflected. Was that the highlight? Was that it? Was that the nugget of information? The final chance. The goalkeeper was making a run for it for a second. Moncur, the super sub with a disastrous, nightmarish attempt. And we eke towards the final whistle. Anything left in the tank. Judd. Bone. Gets a cheap corner. McEnough. Oh my days. He's had enough McEnough. Masanka will just hold the ball. This will be a, a big result for them. It'll be a nightmare for us. Dayton. Bone. Play it in the middle. Nobody's there. Absolute dross. Dayton over the top. No chance. Miserable. Miserable. Obviously, that's not how I was hoping today would go. And I'm hoping that still leaves us top of the top of the pops because, uh, yeah, that would be great. Yep, nope, we are now second. So that fixture congestion in the month of December will be critical. 
So be sure to stick around and join me on Twitch next week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, as I try to rectify this wrong and get Leighton Orient back to the top spot. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date with all my Football Manager content as I move forward. And also check out my Twitch channel. Make sure you give me a follow there and I'll keep you updated with ever, whenever I decide to go live. But it mostly will be Tuesdays and Thursdays. And if you enjoy this video, make sure you give it a like. Make sure you stick around so you help cheer on the Orient as we go into this critical festive period where there's a massive nine points on the line. Until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe. Check back for more FM content over the next few days. As for my Rovers fans, fear not. Blackburn Rovers content will always be my number one. So don't you go anywhere. Anyway, let's head back into the dugout for some more FM action.